Brandy Thompson is the CEO of Kids Save, and she joins us now. Brandy, thank you so much for being here with us. Thanks for your time this morning. First, we just want to hear about the type of work that you're doing in Ukraine. What's it like, how you're doing it, and how many people have you been able to help? Right now in Ukraine, we're doing rescue and humanitarian. Uh, we were in Ukraine to do child placement um, into families out of orphanages, but when the war hit, we got a call from our program people that said, I have 117 children that we just placed into families. We have to get them out of danger. Because this was in Mykolaiv and Kherson where the Russians attacked first. So we quickly mobilized and got a group in with, you know, sort of a ragtag team, um, got those 117 kids to safety in the villages. So we didn't move them out of Ukraine. Within a day, we realized that I wasn't going to be good enough. (laughs) And we began an effort to get vans and trucks and cargo vans. And we started buying sprinters and developed a convoy of 66 drivers, you know, six convoys going out to all the regions when people were frightened and ready to leave. Today, we've rescued almost 24,000 people out of those regions. And because the people are displaced, we're feeding nearly 35,000 people each week. Mm. So it's a lot of people. Um, there's the need is so much greater, you know, as, mm. as the Ukrainian story goes off the headlines. Yeah. Um, the need is just going up, up, up. So we're in a position where, you know, we're trying to still do the child welfare work that we came into Ukraine to do to help children live in families. But first and foremost, now you got to keep people safe. You got to keep them fed you got to keep them alive. So, you know, you live to fight the other day. I mean, mm-hmm. you're doing this in a war zone. How do you keep people safe, keep people fed? What are the biggest challenges? Well, um, first we had to get our vehicles, obviously. Mm-hmm. And then we had to armor vehicles. <laughs> I mean, these are all things that yeah. as a, you know, child welfare permanency person were new to me. <laughs> but, yeah. um, you know, it's like almost starting a new not-for-profit as you're learning this. But, um, you know, we had to get armor. For our team, we had to get you know helmets and ballistics, gas masks, all the things that they need to be able to go in. And then you have to learn how to source the food. And you know the knee-jerk reaction is to get everything from the U.S., but that is absolutely wrong because it costs a lot. And some things you have to get from the U.S., like, you know, just the quality for tourniquets and things like that. But we are getting as much as we can from Ukraine so that we can bore up, you know way up the economy there as well for those people who can work because so many are not able to. Absolutely. And again, just, I mean, the fact that the work you went in to do, and now these are people who have to be wearing armor and helmets. Exactly. I mean, what do you need right now? What help can people provide who are listening? What is it that would be helpful to your organization? Yeah, we need uh, everything. Everything's needed right now. Um, As we look to the fall, Um, You know, we know we need generators. We know we need cooking things because they've blown out all the electrical. We need to just keep supplying. You know, if there's, we're feeding 35,000 a week and they have territorial people tell us we need to feed 105,000. We need to continue to raise money. I mean, it's, I know people like to get in there and give, you know, give stuff Mm. because that makes them feel really good. But we really need the donations to come in so that we can purchase the, the things to get to them and so that people in Ukraine can have a business that they sell those things. You know, it's really long term if you have, you know, Ukraine was two and a half million people uh, below the poverty line mm. last year. And there's projecting that it could be 50 people, 50, you know, 50 percent of the people at the poverty line next year. So. Everything we're doing, even as we're looking at humanitarian aid, we want to think about how do you get it into Ukraine so Ukrainians who are there can work. And the Ukrainians want to work. You know, they don't want to just sit there and wait mm-hmm. for the bombs. Yeah. I have a volunteer who was helping us to distribute food, and she said, thank you for giving me something to do other than wait for, you know, under the bunker. Wow. So, you know, you're giving people purpose and keeping them feeling yeah. like things are... Yeah. are happening and helping their economy which of course needs it right Randy yeah. thompson thank you so much incredible work that you're doing we appreciate your time this morning and letting us know how we can help thank you thank thanks you. for Good having you. me